I don't want you to miss this next segment either. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to bring on right now the former middleweight champion of the world, Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Thank we you. miss you. Oh, thank we miss you. you from the middleweight ranks. Tonight, after the championship fight tonight, the IBF title, an opportunity to bestow the Marvelous Marvin Hagler trophy on the champion. What does that mean? I mean, representing the middleweight champion of the world, that must be very special for you. I think it's very special, but I hope that uh, it, it continues as a tradition, uh, not just a one-night stand. What do you think about the middleweight ranks now? You've been away from it for a while. Uh, it's a little bit different from when you were running. Well, now the title, I think, has changed 14 different uh, times, and maybe tonight it might change again. Uh, I would like to see all the fighters come together and uh, Oh, and unite the title and make only one like I was an the middleweight champion. It's so, it's so politically driven, though. It makes it real difficult, doesn't it, to, to get all those titles unified? Well, I believe that uh, it's going to take time, no doubt. But uh, I think that the public really wants to know who is the real champion. And uh, hopefully that uh, top rank and other people will start to think about this and unite the title. Tonight, the middleweight championship, the marvelous Marvin Hagler trophy up for grabs. Who are you picking tonight between Tony and McCall? Well, to me, I think that the fight is very easy, uh, very even. Uh, I'm almost like a spectator because uh, I've seen both of the fighters work before, and uh, it should be a very interesting fight. All right, thank you very much. My Marvelous pleasure. Marvin Hagler, my pleasure indeed. My pleasure. Thanks for joining us, and you're going to be joining uh, Lynn Berman and Joe Gooser down in ringside for the commentary on that championship fight, the IBF championship up for grabs. Marvelous Marvin Hagler, you know, there can be no doubt about it. The middleweight ranks just have not been quite the same. The tenacity and the certain kind of vibrancy has been gone since Marvelous left the ranks. But the middleweight ranks are certainly... The sparks are going to be flying tonight as uh, James Tony defends his IBF championship against McCallum. Tony, the IBF champion since May, says he really wants to claim middleweight supremacy, but he'll have to go through Mike McCallum to do it. And until very recently was the WBA champion, McCallum says, I'm still a champion. And he thinks in 12 years older, his experience will give him the edge. At 35, Mike McCallum is considered the old master of his trade. And tonight, he faces a young, hungry lion, James Tony. Yes, he's young. Yes, he's strong. But I've beaten down so many young guys. And he thinks that because he's young and he has youth in his favor, that's all. You have to fight one because of that. With his age comes experience, experience that can never be taught outside of the ring. Eddie Futch, who trains Mike, feels that against Tony, Mike's age will be an asset. His age will be a factor in that, with that age came experience. And the experience that he's gained down through the years will stand him in good stead against Tony. It was nearly a decade ago that he got his chance to fight Sean Mannion for the vacant WBA Junior Middleweight Championship. He captured the title and remained undefeated as a junior middleweight. The most significant of these wins was a devastating knockout of Donald Curry. Remember the uh, Donald Curry fight, which is an uh, electrified knockout, electrifying punch, that one punch knockout. That was I think, the most exciting fight for Mike McCollum. After that Curry fight, Mike moved up to the middleweight division, suffered his first and only loss in his career against Sunbu Kalambe. He came back strong and eventually captured the vacant WBA middleweight title. Mike had every intention of putting that title on the line tonight. But due to a monetary and WBA bylaw conflict, Mike was stripped of his belt. I go all over the world to fight as a champion. Name two or three champions today. What done what I've done. Back against the wall in other people's hometown. Right. No. Mike McCollum did it. And with, uh, despite all of that, they still giving me a raw deal in terms of the title. For McCallum, who's relished his victories and suffered through losses, one thing remains constant, daughter Michelle. They have a special relationship ever since her mother's death. She loves her daddy a lot. She's crazy about me, and I'm crazy about her. And I tell her, don't be afraid to speak your mind. Talk to me. I'm your friend, I'm your father, I'm your everything. Mike is a superstar in Michelle's eyes and hopes to claim that superstar status in the boxing world tonight. I will box when I have to box. I will fight when I have to fight. And I'll punch when I have to punch. When I have to get down and get mean and dirty and punch, I will do that. The bottom line for Mike McCollum is winning. If I wait until December 13th again, 
and let it fight on Friday the 13th. That's my favorite holiday, like I said, get to hurt somebody. Tonight, Mike McCallum faces James Tony, a young lion who looks to devour the old master. Tony is vicious in the ring, and his attitude was something that first attracted manager Jackie Callum. There was just something about him that set him apart from everybody else in the gym, and I think it was his attitude. He wanted it a little bit more than everybody else did. Jackie gave James more than just the opportunity to box. She's developed an atmosphere for him that is comparable to that of a family. James is more than just somebody that I work with. James is like family to me. James is my friend. He's become a major part of my life, and I like to think hopefully I am a kid too. While Jackie tries to make her champion a household name, she leaves the training in the hands of veteran Bill Miller. Pops is great. Always calm. You know, he don't never get over, you know, over exaggerated or hype or anything. And tells you like it is. You know, we, we, do, we do a lot of things together. Just like me, we all do it as a big family. My corner people are big, like we like family. We do everything together. We joke, play with when we get out of the business. We're serious. Serious was the only way to describe May 10th in Iowa. James Tony is getting his chance at the IBF middleweight title. None entered the ring as the champion and hometown favorite. Going into the 11th round behind on every scorecard, Tony proved he had the heart and the courage of a true champion. Oh, he's down. It's his career. He is out. He is hurt. I don't know if he's going to get up. So good, Dr. Oh, I got him now. Lights out. Kind of put the, bring the curtains down. The May 10th fight in Iowa was almost like an out-of-body experience for me. It was surrealistic. I was there, I was watching it, and yet I was above it all. I could picture myself just, you know, 30 feet above the stadium looking down, and then when that knockout punch came, it was like a dream come true. James Tony wins the title! After winning the title and through all of the excitement, James was thinking of his true inspiration, a little girl who taught him the meaning of courage. I can't forget my little sweetheart, Elizabeth. Here's that sign. I'm all right. No matter how hard it gets in the gym, and no matter how strained our, our tempers get, we think about Elizabeth with her big smile, and it makes everything else seem very trivial. The newest member of the family, Kevin, joins Elizabeth as James's biggest fan. They visit him while he trains long and hard to gain the respect he feels he deserves. In order to get respect, you have to fight the best fighters in the division, which I have. I'll fight anybody in order to get that respect. And I think this is the fight that'll do it for me. This fight should produce the dominant middleweight for the 90s, and I'm hoping it's going to be James Tony. Well, one of his very special members of the fan club, Elizabeth Steelman, here tonight, waiting for James Tony to come out. She is representing the other half. Kevin is back in the Michigan area, but she's ready to root for James Tony. That's coming up, the main event. James lights out Tony, defending his IBF middleweight championship of the world against Mike, the body snatcher, McCallum. It's about time. Let's go down to Lynn Berman at ringside. Lynn. Thank you, Cambrell Marshall. This is one of those delicious fights that cuts right through the, mor the morass of all of those boxing alphabet soup organizations. Doesn't matter what organization, what letters. The winner here tonight is the people's middleweight champion. Everybody will realize that in boxing. Okay, for Mike McCallum, does he finally get that recognition tonight that's eluded him so long in his good career? If McCallum beats Tony, he beat the man that I think beat the best middleweight in the world. James Tony beat Michael Nunn, knocked him out. If McCallum can beat James Tony tonight, He's got to be the best middleweight in the world. McCallum is the heavy favorite, despite the fact that Tony won with that one-punch knockout in the 11th round of Michael Nunn. So, for James Tony, is he a one-punch artist, or is he the next marvelous Marvin Hagler? No, James Tony isn't a, isn't a one-punch artist. Uh, he, he really wore down Michael Nunn by a great body attack and then took it to him to the head later on in the rounds. And that's what won in the fight. He's a good tactician. They're both great tacticians, great fighters. And this one, to me, is a pick em fight. Well, let's get going. Goosen's Corner, starting with the challenger, Mike McCallum. All right. Mike McCallum, really a, a true gentleman. Uh, of course, he's 35 years old and a lot of experience behind him. He's got a pressure behind a jab to get to Tony tonight. He's got to, once he does get in with the jab, he's got to be first to that body. He can't wait uh, for Tony to do something first. And then when Tony does react, he's got a counter punch here again. And really, those are the keys, I believe, to McCallum's victory tonight. And there is Mike McCallum, dressed in black. He's the former WBA middleweight champ. By only a couple of days, he was stripped of his title. 
because, as his camp puts it, they would not pay extortion money to the World Boxing Association. So this was to be a unification bout with WBA and IBF. However, TBKO stood behind Mike McCallum's decision, and therefore they are fighting for only the IBF championship tonight in protest of the actions of the WBA. But I'm guessing that the belt they're holding is the belt that they have been stripped of. Most likely, of course, you're, you're able to keep the belt that you win, so uh, he feels he's still the champion regardless. Well, the sign says no, that's the, not the people's WBA, champion yeah. in front of him anyway. That's not the WBA belt. And there's the record. The one loss to Colum Bay, which he since avenged. 142, 34 of them by knockout. And he is a 5-2 to two favorite. He says tonight. if he wins this fight tonight and he has to fight McCallum again, he won't do it. Or uh, Callum Bay again, he won't do it. That's how difficult a fighter he felt Callum Bay was. All right, let's check out your Goose's Corner for James Tony. All right, James Tony, what a surprising, shocking, great knockout over Michael Nunn. And tonight he's got to fight a little bit different fight where he put pressure on Nunn. He's got to use his speed tonight and lots of angles around Mike McCallum. Try to, you know, make those older legs work and uh, maybe work overtime and counter over the jab. If anything, if McCallum's been susceptible to anything, it's been that counter right hand over his jab. And Tony's got a terrific right hand. That would be his key to a victory tonight. And there he comes, Jackie Callum, his manager. On his arm, James Tony, with that glaring look of his. He's fought twice since winning the title in Davenport, Iowa, here on TBKO, and he did not look too terrific in those fights, but he calls them aberrations. He says his trademarks will appear tonight, the slipping, the bobbing, and the weaving. Well, you know, I, I truly believe James Tony will do, have a better fight against a better fighter tonight. And uh, let's see what uh, McCallum brings out in him tonight. At the press conference, he gave McCallum a rocking chair as a birthday present. There you see his record. One draw, Sanderline Williams. He avenged that as well. But he said he gave him the rocking chair because he's going to rock him tonight. The two of them exchanged glares in the ring. And Steve Smoger, the referee, takes uh, Tony by the waist and shuffles him off to his own corner. Because Tony's liable to start something right here in the middle of the ring while, while they got their warm-ups on. No love lost between these two fine middleweights. It's our tail of the tape. James Tony. A dozen years younger, Tony is 23, McCallum is 35. So McCallum, obviously, a much more veteran fighter, even in height. And I know the weight concerned you a little bit. McCallum came in a bit light, Joe. He did. He came in at 157 and three quarters, of course. Uh, having the weigh in the day before the fight allows you to replenish your, your nutrients and, and put your food back in your system, so it may not play a big part as if the way it happened today. Let's check out some CompuBot statistics to set up this affair. Right, here we go. Uh, 63 uh, punches per round for Tony, 75 McCallum, 24 landed. And here you've got, you know, a pretty even scale here. Of course, McCallum's got the edge on punches thrown and landed and percentage. And the jabs. The jabs, well... You know, McCallum really wants to work his jab tonight in here. Uh, he's got the advantage again over Tony with uh, throwing uh, at least 10, 12 more per round and landing uh, almost double. When and Tony the rules wins. for this IBF championship fight, slightly different from the previous two. 10-point must system, but no standing eight count. Again, uh, there is no three knockdown rule for this fight. Cannot be saved by the bell in any round. The doctor can stop the fight. So, we're ready to go. Let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bob Arum and Top Rank Incorporated, in association with the undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser, presents World Championship Boxing. This belt is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Jerry Gormley, Board Members, Gary Shaw and Richard Harrison. Deputy Commissioners R. Yogi Hiltner and Lawrence Wallace. Chief Medical Officer at ringside, Dr. Frank B. Doggett. Attending physician, Dr. Charles Wilson and Dr. Earl Shaw. The timekeeper is Roosevelt Gilbert, counting for the knockdown seconds. Alternate referee, Rudy Battle. This bout is also sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation. President, Robert W. Lee. Supervisor at ringside, Marion Muhammad. The officials assigned as judges, Scoring the bout on a 10-point must system are Tommy Kazmarek, Robert Cox, and Gary Merritt. 
And when the bell rings, the man in charge of all the action, referee Steve Smoger. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Atlantic City's Convention Hall, by way of Donald J. Trump in the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Twelve rounds of boxing for the middleweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with white trim. He weighs 157 and three-quarter pounds. Fighting out of Brooklyn, New York, he brings a professional record. 42 victories with only one defeat. 34 knockout victories. Ladies and gentlemen, a two-time world champion looking for number three, Mike the Body Snatcher Mikala. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the white trunks with gold trim, weighing an even 159 pounds. From the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, his professional record, 28 victories without a defeat, one draw, 20 of those 28 victories are by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, the IBF middleweight champion of the world, James Lights Out. All right, you gentlemen, we're giving your instructions at the weigh-in. You must obey my commands at all times and respect the bell at all times. Are there any questions? Touch them up. Put your hands out. We don't go unless we touch them. Touch them up, Jimmy. Well, James Tony, a bit reluctant to touch gloves. We're joined by marvelous Marvin Hagler. He glares as well as you do in the ring. Well, see, you remind me of myself a little bit. <laughs> but uh, I, I like the, the, the look. And both of their eyes, mm -hmm. they, they're ready to go. Two champions. Ah, oh, yeah, they're ready to go. Here we go. Round one scheduled for 12, the championship fight. For the IBF championship belt, the Tony Hole. Well, you know, McCullen was sending, and he looked like an old pro. He wasn't really uh, thinking that uh, Tony has anything to, to make him scared, you know? And that was, that's kind of a good look of confidence. Plus, I want to see behind them stripping McCullen whether or not he wants his title back to prove something to the to the organization. Very good, very good. But Tony's throwing very hard punches already. Chris Jab, and there goes McCallum to Tony's body. Oh, these guys are really laying the level out in the first round. Uh, neither of them are holding back right at this stage. McCallum, of course, landed a accidental low blow, and they shook hands, which is a good sign right at the beginning, showing a lot of respect for each other. Good sign. Tony immediately shrugged it off. Steve Smoger asked if he was okay. He said, yeah. Yeah, but this fight's not over. He get him back some other kind of way. <laughs> but the hand speed is tremendous, and by McCullough's weight down to 157, I know he's got the speed, but I wonder how much power he has. Well, to answer that question, because I asked him about it, he's got 11 fights as a middleweight and only five knockouts in those 11 fights were 32 fights at junior middleweight. He had 29 knockouts. Ah, big discrepancy uh, uh, between the two weights. But uh, I'm looking at Tony dropping his left hand a little bit, you know, like the old pros years ago, but he's got the right hand in the front of his face. Right. <laughs> he leaves that left hand down, but he's got that great shoulder roll. Great right? shoulder right. rolling, exactly. <laughs> Well, McCullough's going right to work, using the jab, using the body. And McCallum, the more active jabber, as the copy box showed you. But it Tony sounds, came back with a right. Sounds funny when you mention uh, for, the, for the, the middleweight championship of the world. And I'm right sitting here. Sitting here. Oh. Right. <laughs> Too late for a comeback, Mark? No, no, no. I'm doing movies, man. All right, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Got it straight here and now. Good exchange. Oh. They're throwing, the, they got great hand speed. Both fighters, great hand speed in the first round. And Tony uh, throwing more jabs than we expected. But Tony looks to be very serious, and as you know, you get that superior complex when you become champion of the world. So uh, he, he's not fair. He knows he's the champion, and now the thing is to prove 
give something to let the people know that he's a deserving champion. Do you think the uh, the fact that the WBA took that belt away from McCallum can influence his ego at this point, his confidence? Well, this is what makes this fight so interesting. Uh, this is what I feel. Um, both guys, both guys have something to prove, and they're starting off very good. Oh yeah. And Tony just stood there, glaring again at the end of the round. Now you need to get a little bit closer with your jam. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go to the replay here. We're, this is that low blow. A right hand thrown by Tony, and McCallum trying to counter to the belly gets pulled down by Tony's right arm, and that was, uh, you know, really caused by Tony getting on top of McCallum, that right hand strain low. No, that was accident. That was right. accident. All right. McCallum told us if Tony doesn't get him out quick, it's going to be a long night. Oh, yeah. Buy, guys buy that? Well, hey, listen, it's already uh, a good start for McCallum. He's got 35% of his punches landing compared to 29 for Tony. Well, a lot of times, it's, uh, you know, if you have a great corner, you know, and you got a guy like Eddie Fletch in there, uh, he's going to, like he's told him to move in closer with his jab. You know, and Eddie is a, a very well, good teacher. You know that, of course. Both, both these guys are real, uh, really represented well by their corners. Bill Miller in the other corner, to me, was very instrumental in Tony winning that title for Michael Nunn. Ah. You know, the first time that I've seen Tony really look more aggressive, more confident in his punching power and also in his boxing. I think with none, he didn't really do so much. He laid back a lot more. Tony moving well. Moving the body from side to side. Dipping. Good right hand from Tony. Oh, Callum comes back at him. Well, that's McCallum's bread and butter punches, that right hand uppercut counter off of a right hand by his opponent, and he's really used it tonight. This, this is one of Tony the lands another right. This is one of the reasons why Tony is holding that right hand up there. Nice, good left hook by McCullen. It hit Tony right in the eye and bothered him. Look at that right uppercut counter off of Tony's right hand. Just narrowly missed it, did McCallum. Great punching, good technique. Using the body, using the head. Nice up a cut by Tony. Tony, yeah. The Callum with the Great leaping move. right. <laughs> Great move. To spin around. Brings a smile to Tony. Well, he's in there with an the old pro. McCullough's an old pro. Yeah. And I, I believe that McCullough knows that he's going to try to make this attack. So I think he's prepared for this. Tony's landed some good, strong rights here in the second round. Good puncher. I'll tell you, he landed a solid right hand. McCallum ate it up and is coming back strong. Wow. Well, when you're champion, you know, like Tony, <laughs> he's, he's, got, he's got to prove something here to the, to the people, I think. Tony starts smiling again at McCallum. More of a smirk. Tony has landed three crisp right hands in the second round. To me, Tony kind of Matt, remind me a little bit of the beast Mugabe when I fought Mugabe. Very strong, didn't know how to lose. And this is the type of attitude that I see that Tony has right now. Callum flashing the jab. The second round winds down. Tony's catching real good. Uh, he's throwing those punches real well. I like the way he's fighting. a beautiful double hook delivered by Tony, body and head, and I, I think that had a lot to do with McCallum going down. World no knockdown by Steve Smoger. Tony landing at the end of the round. Here we go on that replay here. Uh, Tony missing with that right hand, coming back with a double hook. And of course, McCallum a little off balance, and Tony did help him down with that right hand around the neck there. Yeah, it was uh, caught around the All right, here we go, the, the right sharp elbow. vision overhead replay. 
McCallum, Tony trying to counter that right hand, and McCallum countering him right back. It's really a real chess match here. Both these guys are, are so talented and know what they're doing that you know, it's a dangerous fight for both of them at this point. Well, I have to agree with you. <laughs> it seems like that. It's very even. But now I think that Tony thinks that that was a knockdown, so he's going to come out, I think, in this round a little bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm. All right. This is round three, 12 round championship fight. Big punches thrown in that second round. James Tony doing what Bill Miller asked him to do, and that's to pick up that jab. You notice the jab was hanging down by his side. He's got it up and he's using it more a little bit this round. Well, to me, Tony looked much better than when he fought uh, Nunn. You know, he looked like he's improved, like almost overnight. Well, you said it, that championship can make you a monster. Exactly. Really, he didn't it. look so great in those last two fights, guys. Oh, he's looking great in this one. Yeah. <laughs> McCullough's trying to lay back, try to suck him in to throw the right hand to set up his own left hook. But the right connected against for Tony. It's been effective tonight. And I believe what McCullough has to do is box more. Tony looks the more stronger and uh, got the more power. You know, he's 24 years old. He, he really is a natural middleweight. Where McCallum had took him into his 30s before he really reached that 160-pound limit. Fought exactly. at 54 for many years. Midway through the oh, third round. Shot. The sneaky little nice straight hand. Nice sneaky right little counter right, right hand. Went about four inches. Oh. <laughs> nice. Nice up cut by McCallum. McCallum with the combination. The main thing, too, is that McCollin, hope McCollin don't get tied in there. That's the main factor, because in that round, he's throwing a lot of punches. <laughs> you notice neither one of these fighters are faking much. Tony with the right and try to follow up with a combination again. You know, Tony's trying to go for a home run. <laughs> yeah, well, you talk you talk about all the attribute, attributes they have, and Tony does have a great sneak right hand, but McCallum shows he's got one as well. Exactly, and he's coming back. Uh, he wants to let you know that he's in this fight. You know, we've really yet to see the thing that Mike McCallum is most famous for, and that's his body attack. He's really exactly. Tony landed another right hand. Oh, these type of body, these type of shots, you know, both fighters got to be in tremendous uh, shape because they've taken some nice right hand shots. One of the infrequent body shots right there by Tony. <laughs> well, that was the one that I spoke about that he would get it back. <laughs> tremendous pace, really, for uh, for these two guys. For both fighters. Oh, my Well, the people actually getting their money worth, too. Uh, watch moving to your left. Because you can lead up there by hand, like okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Follow me? All right, let's pick up this face. All right, Sam Dinella, now our guest judge at ringside tonight. How do you have it through three, Sam? I have McCallum winning the first two. I gave Tony the third, although I feel kind of queasy about that one. I think uh, it's status quo right now. If there is a, a, a surprise here, it's that Tony seems to be fighting better than he did early on against Nunn uh, in the fight that he won. Two different animals in there. Michael Nunn, you had a six foot two southpaw in there, and, and that, that's all the difference in the world. Well, you know, I think uh, Nunn, Nunn was a little uh, careless, and uh, you know, Nunn's a very cocky type of a fighter. Uh, I think he just got careless in there. So now tonight we'll see if Tony's that real champion that he supposed to be now. Getting into the fourth round. James Tony in the white, the IBF middleweight champ against the Wiley veteran Mike McCallum, stripped of his WBA middleweight belt. Well, as you know, in the middleweight division, they always had the power and uh, also the speed. And plus, there's always a lot of excitement in the middleweight division. Nice right hand. Right hand. And, and Tony came Tony back to the right of his own. Points. Now they mix it up. You're right, Marvin. McCallum hit with the right, and Tony came back with his own. 
But look at the excitement that they're bringing into the middleweight division. Mm. This is great. It's really unfortunate McCallum's come into this division at 35 years old. Well, he's got the experience. <laughs> yeah. But he's fighting a young, aggressive uh, Tony here. In a tough fight like this, you hate to see if any guy lose, you know? Would conventional wisdom give the younger man the advantage the longer it goes? Well, they don't know, really. Uh, you know, if McCollum starts to lay back and start using his experience, but uh, Tony is taking it right to him, catching him with nice right hands and showing him that he's the champion. But as you know, McCullough didn't lose the WBA title. They stripped right. him of it. So he probably still feels the same way that he's champion, too. Well, you wonder about this pace for a 35-year-old over 12 rounds. But here he goes with the jab here in the fourth round. McCallum, Tony comes back with another right hand. That's been his bread and butter punch. Another one. And McCallum comes right back with a right of his own. And McCallum so adept at really riding that right hand out and coming back with his own. Yeah, and another good right yep. for McCallum. But what McCallum's doing is he's sliding back on his sword. It's not catching him solid. Right. Oh, Whoa. another right from Tony. I mean, he can't... And the right uppercut, another right hand from James Tony. And McCallum comes right back. And Act Tony with a right. This is where he didn't get hit. This is where... Oh, oh, that strong right hand from McCallum. This is where the experience comes from. Both of them landing bombs here in the fourth. Excellent right hand. Oh, another one from Tony. And another. This is turning to be a great fight, eh? Great. This is some round. Oh. this type of fight too who's in better shape and take a better punch well that's yeah that's the that's the issue the longer it goes both of them riding out this round oh boy that was special can they do this every round like that i mean oh, that i think it's going to be like this so uh, great pace here goes the replay here mccallum really working that jab and uh, tony countering with the right hand mccallum coming right back this has really been the the uh, the blueprint for this fight all night one guy counter punching the other but see, you see how Tony is, uh, I mean, how McCullen is slipping the punches. He's rolling with the punches. So there we go, actually... the sharp vision, the overhead replay here. You see that double jab. Right hand landed well on Tony's chin. Really stopped him in his tracks and another short right hand. Mm. But here comes Tony back with his own counter right uppercut. Hit him in the chest, but those two right hands by uh, McCallum were very sharp. Well, as a moment for me, I feel the fight still looks very even. I agree. I have it with Tony with the edge. Well, here we go. A total of four rounds. You've got 80 punches thrown by uh, McCallum, 73 by Tony, 44% by Tony Landed, 36 mm -hmm. for McCallum. It's close. Well, McCallum's using a nice jab, though. He's snapping the jab very well. <laughs> I just give the edge to Tony on the right hand bomb. It's just landing more of them. Exactly. <laughs> Both of these guys are in tremendous shape to take such this much punishment in early in the early going of this fight.
McCallum with the combination. Obviously, it slows from that dynamite fourth round. Well, this is what I speak about now. McCullough is just going to lay back and try to use his experience against Tony. Change of jab. Why do you think McCollum's changed gears like this, uh, Marvin? Well, he's trying to go with the experience right now. You know, to slow the pace down, he realized that uh, this fight might have to go to distance. Make Tony miss a little bit? Oh, sure, make him miss, take something, that, take some of that energy out of him, you know? You know, you can't hit nothing you can't see, you know? Well, he's been successful. Tony's really come short on a few of his bombs that he's thrown while McCollum's been moving like that right hand and left hook. And this is exactly what McCollum's doing right now. Make him work, make him move. Make a miss, take some of that energy out of him. And that, that's the proper way to do it, to fight a guy like this with such a tremendous punch. Mm -hmm. Tony swinging and missing again. May take something out of him. Another miss. Well, you know, with Tony, even when he did none, he came in in the 11th round. That's where he knocked him out. So we have to wait and see. <laughs> Absolutely. the left hand up. Left hand is too low. Okay, the left hand is too low. You look yeah. too far away because yeah, you reach the top every time you're near the rope. Yeah. Okay. That's why you take this right, the center, the left, then the right, same thing, then you take when you don't step in there, you find yourself breathing. No, no, what I mean is, you take the shield and that round with a breather. I would, I would, well, here you got uh, a pretty even mark right here, 37 to 36 percent. You know, the slight edge by McCallum and basically the same number of punches and punches thrown and landed. Joe, breathing counts for anything. McCallum breathing a lot harder and heavier after that fifth round than Tony. Well, you know, you can hear McCallum over your your headphones here. He's breathing, really laboring in the corner here. And, uh, you look at Tony, he's sitting there with the cucumber right now. That of course, McCallum may, may need to catch that second win. Start of the sixth round. Scheduled for 12, championship fight. Well, I think Tony really wants to put the pressure on him to make him work now. He's breathing that hard. In Tony's corner, they were telling him that he was dropping his left hand. He told him to pick the left right. hand up a little higher. That's the second time Bill Miller has urged him to do that. And when he is working that jab, he's, he's being successful with it. But right now, McCallum's jab has landed 93 times to 60 times to, to Tony 60 times through five and a half rounds. But that's still a lot for Tony. Oh, another right hand from Tony. But as you notice, McCollum is sliding back with the when he shoots the right hand, so it's not catching him solid. Or to catch a fighter solid like that, he had to come forward. McCollum's using that jab very well. Oh. Tony catches him again. Tony looks too much pressure out of the both fighters at this moment. Oh, good left hook. Good left, yeah. Allen. Oh, good right hand by Tony, and it did buckle McCallum there. And another right to Tony, and Tony goes after him. What a, what a chin on McCallum. He got even three straight right hands. Well, you can tell that's what conditioning pays off. Wow. Well, he's finding a home for it this round, that right hand. Uh, right counter. to the body. Good counter right hand off of McCallum's right hand. Tony's been hitting him all night with that counter right hand. 
Well, McCullen, he's got he's to gotta flick at that jab a little quicker now. He's starting to get lazy with it. Mm -hmm. And that's why Antonio is starting to counter right over it. But what amazes me is how McCullen comes right back after taking a big punch like that. You really said it, Marvelous, because that, uh, that exhibits a great chin. Because we know Tony can punch. Low blow there by McCallum. Keep him up, Mikey. Warned by Steve Smoger. The final seconds tick off in the sixth round, where Tony landed some more bombs. Well, Mike was doing something smart right there, moving the opposite way, away from the right hand. And it's not really the natural way to move for an for right. orthodox fighter. See, but he's getting out of range of the right hand. Mike is counting on every right hand you throw. We've got five more pressure. We're not applying enough pressure. Okay, here we go. Here's that first right hand by Tony right off the temple. Here comes McCallum right back. He stands up to it well. Tony steps in and throws a couple meaningless punches there. But here we go again, Tony out of a crouch. McCallum, bingo, they trade right hands. Mc, uh, Tony drops his head and avoids McCallum, and McCallum takes his. Here we get the sharp vision overhead replay. It's a good angle, bingo, oh man. McCallum with his left hand down and his chin up. And Tony even dug in a little uh, body shot and looked to the liver right there for extra good measure. Well, you know, I think that... Uh, I see a little blood coming from the, either the mouth or the nose of uh, McCallum. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Through six rounds, so McCallum is the worst for wear between the two. Tony goes after him once again as we start round seven. Looks like Tony's building some confidence here. Oh, yeah. You know? Is it, can McCallum knock him out, Joe, do you think? Uh, oh, yeah. Either of these guys can knock either one of them. Well, it's a second. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell they're, they're throwing with so much power. Either of these guys could really... Nice right hand by Tony again. again. He's got a beautiful right hand. Oh, nice. That was sweet. That was a heck of a move. Beautiful move. That's where the, that's where the old experience comes in. <laughs> I wonder if McCullen, why his breathing problem is because of being punched in the nose. Oh, good combination from Tony. Good right uppercut, left hook by Tony, but McCallum answered with his own left hook. There seemed to be a cut on, on uh, McCallum's nose, probably. McCallum staying active with the jab. There's another one. This may boil down to a, a, a battle of wills here. Who am Who's really willing to See? stick it out? Well, McCullough's dropping that left hand down real low, and that's what he's vulnerable for, right hand. Right. You know, as the rounds go, <laughs> most fighters do drop their hands. Ooh, good exchanges. Keep him up, Mikey. Keep him up. Steve Smoker warning McCallum to keep the punches up. McCallum's left hook straight a little bit low, and Tony gave him a signal that it was low, and Smoker warmed him. Well, the people are actually McCallum's that still low. Oh, good right hand from Tony again. Followed up with a left. Well, what Tony's doing now is he throws that right hand. He's expecting that right hand counter coming back from McCallum. But McCallum's best punch is that left hook. If he shoots it right, it can be very good against uh, Tony. Because every time that he thrown it, he caught Tony with the left hook. McCallum's mouth wide open. Absolutely. 40 seconds to go in the seventh. That's how you get your jaw broke. Right. Both fighters are reaching down deep to start to try to end this fight as <laughs> quick as they can. Oh. McCallum snuck in some real short, little subtle body shots there that seemed to hurt Tony, made him flinch a little bit in there. That's his forte, though. I think, by the way, the picket going down to 157 is actually working for McCollum as far as his hand speed. Oh. McCallum goes after Tony. And it's up to seven. Well, first Tony puts his hands up, and then McCallum puts his hands up. So they're starting to go after each other. 
McCallum really rallied at the end of that round. <laughs> Believe me. Look at that hook. Damn it, hook. Right now. Look here. All right, Sam Ellen. how do you have it? This is a tough one to score. I have McCallum winning by one point because of that last round. I, I also gave him the fifth round. I thought that was experience uh, just showing out. It was a real dull, real slow, real breather kind of round. And McCallum said, hey, you know, this is one I can just steal away. And he did. He put it in his pocket. And who knows if this thing stays like that, that round may come back to haunt James Tony at the end. That exciting fourth round you gave to James Tony. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You see that little nick on the uh, on the bridge of McCallum's nose. <laughs> well, this fight is neck and neck. 40% each they've landed uh, through seven rounds of their punches, total punches. Here we go for round eight. James Tony, the IVF middleweight champ, and Mike McCallum. It's been a fun fight so far. Of course, Eddie Futch uh, calling out to McCallum to use that left hook more, as you pointed out earlier, exactly. Marvin. Because uh, Tony, now you see where he's got his right hand in the front of his face. If he used, if McCallum every time that he would jab and hook off the right. hook off the jab, he was he was it's, it's effective. Excuse me. And Bill Miller, of course, in the opposite corner, asking Tony to give him a little bit more movement, box a little bit more. I think Tony would have to put more pressure on McCullen. So you don't necessarily agree with the instructions he got in the corner then, huh? No, not to box. I think he's got he's to go after McCullen and put the pressure on him and throw punches. McCallum again with a low punch. He's trying to get the, try to tie McCullen out because that's where the experience is coming in, what he's doing. But you got to give both credit to both fighters. They've been taking tremendous punches. Marvin, this is a 12-round uh, fight tonight. How much different is that 12-round fight compared to the 15s? Did you thought so? Oh, well, I prefer the 15s anyway, but these guys seem like they, they, they're in great shirt shape for this 12-round because they know... Oh, another right hand from Tony. Beautiful right hand from Tony. To take such punishment like that, they have to be in tremendous shape. I'm very impressed with both of these fighters. Another right from Tony. <laughs> Stronger right hands have come from James Tony throughout this fight. Well, Tony's trying to counter punch now off McCullen's jab. And Tony puts that shoulder up nice when he wants to block that right hand. He's not. Oh, comes out of there. Good combination from James Tony. And McCallum's punches there. Uh, he seems to be losing a little steam. You're right. Well, Tony's kind of laying back now. He knows. I think he feels the tightness. Oh, oh yeah. Tony landed. <laughs> McCallum with a small combination, but I don't think there's a lot on it. I think there's more on Tony's punches by well, a wide margin. He's breathing kind of hard now. <laughs> Three punches in the middle of that round, which I think told the big tale of this fight. 15 seconds to go in this eighth. McCullen's trying to stay tight now with Tony, which is a smart move for him because you're not getting caught with the right hand as much now. Van Curran is landing a few good body shots in there. Sure. But there's nothing on him, but he's protected. I think that was an important round for James Tony. Wow. What a face. <laughs> You want to go with this belt? All right. Huh? Go in the body. You want to go with this belt? All right. Well, come on. Tell me. You can't handle the hook. Keep it too close. You keep it too close. You can't handle the hook. Keep it too close. Double that hook. What you doing is trying to knock down one of these points. Stay low. Put them together. You're shooting the right hand, but I don't know. Talk it. Here we go. Uh, on the replay here, you got James Tony counter right hand right on the chin, but look at McCallum come back. It's amazing that he hasn't really wobbled or gone down from that. Here we go, another look. McCallum going downstairs and Tony popping out with his right hand through a left hook and another short right hand. Missing a little wildly there, but, uh, you know, give both these guys credit. McCallum for taking it and Tony for coming up with those out of sharp, hard punches. I think now that what McCullum's strategy will be is to stay closer to Tony now because he, he realizes that 
if he stays close, he's not getting hit much with the right hand. It worked for him at the end of the round. Exactly. Nice round. And just in case you're wondering about the star of David on Tony's shorts, that's for his manager, Jackie Callum. See, McCullough should be moving the other way, the opposite way, away from Tony's right hand. Again, the warning from Smoger. Had you expected to see more body punching from McCallum tonight? Well, I really did, but, um, you know, he's starting to, to go to that body the last round and this round, but he's, he's kind of running out of time here going to the body. I think he should have gotten to the body a little bit earlier in this fight, but, uh, you know, it's never too late, I guess, and he's laid in some nice shots this round. My curiosity here is to see what McCallum has left in his punches. Licking the jab. That's left the left hook, hook there. that I was speaking about. Yeah. But he's got to throw more of. Oh. Well, he made a nice flip off the side, McCallum, and really dug a good liver shot against Tony. But Tony keeps on coming. He seems to shrug everything McCallum throws at him, shrugs it right off. Yeah, but McCullough now is moving right in the target of Tony's right hand. Midway through the ninth round. He should be moving the other way and start to shoot his own right hand. Let's see, exactly. Good McCallum right hand. Tony tries to come back. Oh, wildly. Nice move. Oh, nice move. McCallum landing in the ninth. Another body shot with the right from McCallum, and Tony comes back at it. Good counter right hand by Tony, but this McCallum. Now you know why he's been champ since 1984. Exactly. But McCallum has to worry about that he don't tire out. Tony slips away from the corner. I think Tony's new strategy now to let McCallum punch his way out. It takes some energy out of him. I'll tell you what, McCallum landed one or two devastating hooks to the body. That's got Tony keeping his elbows in right now. Well, I think he's caught Tony's attention a little bit. But when he when McCallum moved over towards the corner, he didn't seem to have anything left. Well, this is where that experience, like you said, for him being champion for so long. Plus, there's only 15, 20 seconds left in the round. He, he's really done a lot in this round, and he deserves yep. to wear out a little bit towards the end of these type of rounds where he's thrown that many hard shots. Well, that's oh, that's left from Tony. He can't stay away. He can't stay on the outside, McCullough. He's got to stay close to the Tony. And just when we were wondering about McCallum, and he smirks at Tony, McCallum comes back with the strong ninth round. All right, Sam Dinellon, what do you have for us through nine? Well, I'm giving that round to Tony because of the pops that, that he made early, but uh, I don't feel good about it again. McCallum <laughs> came, came at the end. I, yeah, I wouldn't fight anybody on that round. I got uh, Tony now leading by a round, uh, really because I think he's just... Uh, He's just being so strong. You know, McCallum is shooting, shooting and jabbing. You got to give Tony, the young guy, credit too, backing McCallum in there when he was tired, trying to lean to get that one last right in there, trying to, you know, trying to pull him in there so he makes a mistake and hit him. And when, and when you're, coming, you're coming out, you got to keep your hands up and come down, come out lower. Step off this side, okay? All right. All right. Everything short. And so we go to the 10th round of a fairly even fight. Nine minutes left in the fight. As you know, in Tony's corner, they told him that he was losing this fight, so I expect him to come out more aggressive this round. Oh! And a bomb from Tony. And that one wobbled McCallum. And another run. Oh! Tony comes after him here in the 10th. Tony landing. He moves away real well. That was the trick defense by McCullen is to move back. Tony looked a little spent from throwing those hard punches. Oh, he, he cannot understand why did he get this guy out of there with those garages of punches. And McCallum lands one of his own, a left. 
Maybe Tony trying to get McCallum to expend some energy here. Yeah, he's got to take a little bit of a breather after that. He really, he pushed hard for those, those that, that combination he threw. McCullough can't get too overconfident here. Tony looking for that left hook that put Michael Nuno right away in the 11th in Iowa. Well, he's got the tools, you know. Both guys have really been loading up in this fight. You know, when you figure how short a time Tony's been fighting, only 24 years old, he's got he's got a book full of experience, it looks like, for such a young age. Sure. I am very impressed. You see a, a young haggler up there, Marvelous? Of course not. You can only give so much credit, I suppose. <laughs> uh, but I believe both of them are a tremendous uh, champion. Oh! Left hand from Tony. Oh, my gosh. Well, I tell you what, both of these fighters will be oh! caught tonight, and they both have earned their money. Tony must be asking himself, what do I have to do to make this guy oh, go down? Man. Nice hook. This is what I was speaking knocked about. Knocked his mouthpiece out. Tony knocked McAllen's mouthpiece out with that left hook. And there goes Smoger to pick it up. That was a dynamite left hook. Another one. McCullen is about to the mouthpiece. A lot more. All right, five out. The problem I see too is also the swelling under McCullen's eyes starting to come up. Another right from Tony. Oh, Tony didn't run into the body. And the left. Tony's trying to end it right here in the tent. McCullough has got to stay in tighter. All right, I think we're going to go back in a few seconds to a couple replays here. What? I'd like to see that whole round over again. Oh. This old man wants your belt. <laughs> All right, well, show me. He wants it more than you want to keep it, James. Come on. Come on now. Wake up. Up. You jumped on him and you cut off. Here we go. Here's uh, McCallum slipping, going to the body, but Tony countering right off of that left hook to the body. Here he comes, left hook, right hand, and that did wobble McCallum. Look at his legs shake. And Tony just missing with some punches. That may be, could have put McCallum down on the mat there, but McCallum uses experience to slip. Later in the round, both of them digging to the body. McCallum pulling straight up with his hands down. Got caught with a good left hook. And here he comes back with his own punches. Wow. What great <laughs> champions, great exciting, fighters. Exciting round. Oh, if only all fights could be like this. Oh. Here's the, here's the uh, sharp um, overhead vision here. And that's the punch that knocked out the uh, mouthpiece of McCallum. Wow. So here's the 11th round. That's the round where Tony got none in Iowa. Less than six minutes to go in this championship. Tony jabbing and in the right hand. Boy, Tony just looks like he's got all the confidence in the world come out in this round here. He's got six minutes left, two rounds. I think this could seal the fight for him if he wins these two rounds. Oh, vicious body by nice, his side. Nice combination by both fighters. Tony. Tony does look the pressure out of the ball. Nice slip by Tony. Rocking back, coming yeah. back with that uppercut. Just some real magnificent boxing here. This is what McCullen has been doing all night. Well, we're, we're coming close to the mark where Tony knocked out none in that 11th round here. I'm sure he'd like a repeat. But I don't think so. Uh, McCallum looks like these, this, this is going the distance and it's going to a decision almost for sure. McCallum continues to use that jab midway through the 11th. Tony goes after him. 
Very good move by McCollin in there, flipping both punches. Moving side to side. That's a mark of a smart fighter. Ooh. Tony just looking to tee off, and McCallum really looking a little winded, tying him up on the inside right now. Well, I think he knows the difference that he has to go another round. He would love nothing more than the two. But I think he's, he'd be pleased just if he can just box and try to just add up the points. Oh, he's doing it with that good jab he's using right now. Tony, more of the complete fighter than we saw last night, for sure. Well, sometimes it, it oh, takes nice, a, a nice great fighter. By Tony. Excuse me, Mark. It takes a great fighter to bring out the best in, in, in a talent sometimes. Exactly. Well, you know, uh, with Tony, this fight here can do nothing but improve him, whichever, ha whichever happens. Tony again looking for that knockout punch with 20 seconds remaining in the 11th round. Mm. <laughs> Great shape, McCullough. All right. Oh. Unbelievable. You got to keep jabbing and moving, jabbing and moving. Double your jab. Here we go on the replay. Here's Tony dipping and pop right off the temple. And look at him just lean back, very, very agile, and, and getting out of the way of uh, McCallum's counter right hand. Here's the sharp vision overhead replay. That right hand right over the top, leaning backwards, and then trying to come back with his own uppercut after that and missing with a strong, wild left hook. Tony is still seriously strong right now. Look at that. Just missed with that right uppercut here. I really felt that way from the eighth round on, Joe. Yeah. Don't punch, don't punch with him when he's trying to the amount of punches thrown in this fight here. <laughs> I mean, it, and it's still neck and neck. Wow. They should be on their feet for this fight. It's just been tremendous. Three minutes to go for the championship. I think McCallum's really got to go for broke here. I've given Tony the last three, four rounds here. Oh, good right uppercut by McCallum. Tony had landed a left hook moments before. Right. But he followed that uppercut he got hit with, uh, Tony did, with a good left hook to the liver on McCallum. I said there's no quit in either one of these guys and no shortage of talent. I think Tony would be more effective if he laid off the power and put the combination together. Right. I think you're right. Rather, rather than the wild swings and misses. Exactly. Every time that he misses, it takes a little out of a fighter. But yeah. I just felt that McCallum lacked the power as the fight went on, particularly from the eighth on. I just didn't think he had a, a much in a, as much in his punches as Tony does. You're right. McCullum just can't get careless in there. Well, providing this fight is as close as we think, neither of them can really get careless at this point, but both of them have got to really put out and try to win this round. Oh, it's a very good fight. Uh, they acknowledged here that this should be the, the fight of the year here in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Good right hand by McCallum. Oh! The left from Tony. Oh! And Tony goes after McCallum. Oh! Oh! The right hand from Tony. And another right into the ropes. He's got McCallum hurt badly, and he's still got a minute 15 and to take right care of cut for Tony. McCallum still standing. Look at that. Okay, nothing, powers. nothing in his punches, though, McCallum. What determination to stay up and to fight back by McCallum. McCallum to survive the punishment he's taken. Just remarkable by Mike McCallum. What a man, let me tell you. And Tony's a little spent. Yeah, has to be. Those punches. Has to be. Oh! <laughs> McCallum's mouth wide open. 
Tony looking for one more punch inside of 30 seconds. And the crowd starting to rise to its oh, feet. They've the final to, what a great fight. They've seen a terrific 12-round middleweight championship fight tonight in Atlantic City. Uh, you've seen the best in the business here tonight. This, this was a, a, a great show. We like to see McCullough hang in there. Oh, another left. Oh, another left from Tony. Oh, and another left hook. That's it. And he goes down punching in the 12th round. What a finish from James Tony. Oh, my God. Hello, Frank. <laughs> you glad you retired, Marvelous? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent fight. Tony's about to collapse in there. He's really just leaning oh. on, on Bill Miller. I believe right now for of support. Him in fun. Him in fun. <laughs> well, a, a fight worthy enough for the winner to get the Marvin Hagler trophy. That's oh. for sure. Well, what a what a great night Where's to present it because <laughs> What a, what a great debut for your trophy, Marvels, and hopefully every other middleweight after this can live up to this trophy in this type of fight. All right, Mar Marvelous Marvin Hagler is going to head up into the ring now for that special presentation. That's Elizabeth, the young lady with spinal bifida, saying hello to another young man who is a James Tony fan back home in Michigan, Kevin, who's a paraplegic. <laughs> Anxious to see if the scorecards back up my feeling uh, about James Tony. But I think Tony pulled that fight out in those last four rounds. Here we go. Beginning of the last round here. Tony with that left hook buckles yeah, yes. McCallum terribly. And misses wildly, of course, with that one. And McCallum just unbelievable how he stood up to this uh, final assault by James Tony. I think Tony earned a lot of fans here tonight, Joe. You know, right McCallum hand. was the heavy favorite. And he's just really running uh, McCallum across the ring. And here we go again. That right uppercut by Tony. Mm. Bingo. Left Look hook. Look at that one. Right on the nose. And uh, McCallum's mouth being open made it easy for that mouthpiece to pop out. But that hurt him again. And he followed up with another tremendous left hook. Mike McCallum is one of the toughest men I've ever seen in the ring taking those type of shots and standing up to him. All right. Let's take a look at your unofficial scorecard. Sam Dinellon, how'd you score it? Well, I had Tony winning. Uh, 115, 113. Interestingly enough, what how Joe said uh, the last four rounds he gave to Tony the the eleventh. I felt McCallum won. So with that uh, controversial round that I gave early on to uh, Tony, if you t if if you go with what you guys said, I actually had you know Tony in trouble here, a big time in the twelfth round. However, yeah. uh, you know I'm sure the scorecards are going to be pretty interesting between the judges. From 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 the standpoint of wear and tear, who had the uh, 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 who had more left towards the end, who had more power in his punches. I really felt it tipped clearly towards James Tony. No question, but... A very special presentation will be made to the winner of this bout. The champion, the ultimate champion of the 80s, marvelous Marvin Hagler, will present the winner with his own personalized cup, the heavyweight of the 80s, to the heavyweight, pardon me, the middleweight of the 90s. Here is the official scoring. Gary Murrett scores the bout, 116 to 112. He has it for James Tony. Tommy Kazmarek scores the bout, 115 to 113 for Mike McCallum. Robert Cox scores the bout, 114 to 114. It's a three-way split. Ladies and gentlemen, the bout is a draw. Let's hear it for both of these great fighters here tonight. Well, Cambrell Marshall shaking his head up in the host position. The title is retained by James Tony. James Tony retains the IBF middleweight title based on a draw. And quite a fluctuation. One judge with 116 to 112, a four-point split. One had a 115 to 113, two points the other way. And one had it dead even. Copy box had James Tony throwing fewer punches. They both landed about the same, so Tony's percentage was just a little bit higher. So based on punches landed, you can call it a draw. But I, I, I don't know. I, I gave Tony more powerful punches in there. Mike McCallum, total jabs, as we expected, more than Tony did. I, I think someone sitting in their living room right now who's not keeping score round by round is saying how in the world did James Tony not win that fight? This guy was dead. All right. Well, but the justice is he does retain his middleweight title. Let's go up to uh, Joe Goosen in the ring. Joe? 
All right, here I am with James Tony. Of course, you keep your middleweight title. Did you think that that fight was a draw? No, I, I thought I came. I think I came back in the later rounds and pulled it out. But like I said, I'm not the judge, so hey, I got a draw. So what can I say? No, of course. Is this your toughest fight you ever had, James? This guy be my toughest fight. You know, he's strong. He's a strong old man. Excuse <laughs> me. And he came to give me his best, and hey, he put up a hell of a fight tonight. What was it in your mind that you feel that you that won you that fight, basically? The last two rounds, because Pop Miller was telling me maybe I suck it up, Ugh, give me nine minutes. And I kept pushing up the pace a little bit more. I thought I wore him down. I had him, as you see, I had him out in the last two rounds. I didn't have enough in the tank to finish him off. How do you feel about a rematch with him? All right, we'll fight, all right, we can fight, we can fight tomorrow night if you want to. Ain't no thing with me. I'm ready. All right, you're a great champ, James. You're going to go down in history. Let me tell you, you're a wonderful fighter, and you're... Still 24 years old, you got a long way to go. And 23? All right, okay. All right. Uh, let me get throw this back to Len Ringside right now, and uh, maybe we'll get an interview with uh, Mike McCallum. All right, thank you, Joe. Yeah, I hope we do go after McCallum in the ring because I'd be curious to hear his impressions of what happened there. Of course, when it goes to the scorecards, it's always in the eye of the beholder. As you could tell, as I called the fight, my eye had it for James Tony, as did one judge. One other judge had it to a lesser extent for McCallum, and one had it as a draw. Uh, you can take nothing away from both of the fighters. McCallum certainly stood up to all of those powerful punches that I felt Tony was delivering. And McCallum was deserving of getting a nod for the way he fought in this fight. And as it turned out, he pulled a draw, but he had his WBA title stripped. So he's not a champion despite the effort he put forth tonight. Let's go back to Joey as McCallum with him. All right, here I am with Mike McCallum. Mike, it was a draw. Did you feel that that fight was a draw, or did you feel you won it or lost it? I thought I won. You thought you won the fight. What in your mind makes you feel you won that fight? I was boxing. I was in the fight. I scored my punches, and I had more in the fight than he was. He missed a lot of shots. Now, going down the stretch, who do you think won uh, the last few rounds going down the stretch there? He won a couple, and I won a couple. So you felt it was even good. Did you feel that you were behind or ahead on points going into that last round? Fight. I won the first couple of rounds, big, big, all the way. And he closed some of the last rounds, yes. But I, I was way in front. Did you do what you wanted to do in that fight with James Tony, or is there something that you felt you should have done more of? I should have done more boxing. You should have done more boxing? Yeah. I should have boxed more with him. Did you feel you were as affected with the body as you could have been or should have been? No, I wasn't affected, but I won the fight. All right, I know you're going to be able to go home and look at this tape again. Do you want a rematch with James Tony? And if you do get a rematch, what are you going to do differently this time? I'm going to take charge of the fight more. Mike was a piece. Well, let me tell you something. Both of you put on uh, a wonderful exhibition. It, uh, it, it's, it's good that nobody really did have to lose this fight. And maybe in the rematch, somebody will be able to settle the score. When I lose out. I lost my title. All right, listen. I'm going to throw this back to Len Ringside, and hopefully we're going to see a great these two great fighters get back at it again. Well, that's why McCallum is downcast. He had to give up. He was stripped of his title. Uh, his uh, camp thought that they were having money extorted from them by the WBA, so he has no title. Tony gets to keep his IBF middleweight championship belt. And as far as the Marvin Hagler trophy, because it was a draw tonight, nobody wins that. So not a lot of clear-cut answers here in the middleweight division tonight, other than the fact that Mike McCallum, at age 35, took everything that James Tony had to offer, and the judges saw it as a draw. So quite an interesting night here at the Atlantic City Convention Center. We saw Riddick Bowe win. We saw Charles Murray beat Livingstone Bramble. And here, perhaps a controversial draw with James Tony and Mike McCallum. So that's the story at ringside for Joe Goosen. And marvelous Marvin Hagler and our guest judge who is with us tonight, Sam Dinellon from Boxing Illustrated. That's the story from ringside. Let's go back to our host now, Cambrell Marshall. Thank you very much, Lynn. You notice the look on my face. I was with you. I scored the fight uh, similar and, 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 in fact, the same as one of the judges, 116 to 112 in favor of James Tony. But that's the way boxing is. Certainly one of the better matchups we've seen in quite some time. Let's look at some of the things that happened throughout this evening. We hope you've enjoyed it. It's been an action-packed evening. Riddick Bowe once again going in to try to keep his uh, heavyweight championship hopes alive, and he continued on an undefeated track here against Elijah Tillery, and this was a rematch uh, from their fight from uh, late October of this year, and this time in the fourth round, after Tillery came out surprisingly strong in the first round, you can see Riddick Bowe taking full control in the fourth round. And it looked like he uh, broke uh, the nose. It certainly did some serious damage to the nose of Elijah Tillery. 
artillery at this point in time absorbing a tremendous amount of punishment and it took quite some time for him to go ahead and make up his mind and turn his back on Bo at one point in time. And of course, Riddick Bo winning the fight in the fourth round. Earlier in the evening, the junior welterweights, Charles Onatural Murray, came up with a win on his progress toward winning a, a championship. And uh, he beat Razai Livingstone Bramble. Now, we here at TVKO came on board in April. It's been a great year for us as we head into 1992. We hope you've enjoyed 1991. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights of the year just passed. and he was able to take it. And that proved that, you know, he was an old man. He had that desire to win. Go with that right hand of the body and then switch up and go over the top every so often. See if it can pay off on it. Oh, and Weaver's down. And Weaver's not going to make it. I took my time until he exposed himself. And then he exposed himself, and I ended it. Oh, down. That is it. I just knew that once I get him with a good solid shot, he was all mine. And he's down a second time. If he's in great shape, he'll be able to get up and recover from this. But it doesn't look like it. He made a mistake, and there you, there you have it. I'm falling, and I can't get up, just as I predicted. And again, I think I can do that to any heavyweight who tries to punch with me. I'm ready for the best. I'm Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield. Bring, bring it on.
exciting year, 1991 on TVKO. We hope you've enjoyed that action of 91 and uh, look forward to 1992. You ain't seen nothing yet. We look forward to seeing you in January when we come back to you from New York City. So, for Lynn Berman, Joe Goosen, I'm Cambrell Marshall saying so long from Atlantic City, New Jersey. I'd also like to say thank you to our guest commentator, Marvelous Marvin Hagler. The TVKO Fight of the Month for December was brought to you by Budweiser, the undisputed king of beers, and by 7-Eleven, a sign of the times. Goosen's Corner was sponsored by KO Cards, the sports card with a punch. And be sure to join us next month when we not only ring in the new year, but also it'll be the first to present boxing from Madison Square Garden's all-new Paramount Theater. TVKO's Fight of the Month for January features IBF super middleweight champion Darren Schoolboy Van Horn against heart-pounding Iran Barkley and Olympic medalist Roy Jones Jr., 15-0 all by knockout, goes against former world champion Jorge Vaca. That's live Friday, January 10th, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. Don't miss it. And on January 18th, HBO Sports presents a boxing doubleheader. First, you'll see undisputed lightweight champion Pernell Whitaker moving up to the 140-pound division. And in the main event, WBA welterweight champion Meldrick Taylor puts his title on the line against the determined Glenwood Brown. That's 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific, live on HBO. TVKO wishes you all the best this holiday season. For all of us here in Atlantic City, I'm Cambrell Marshall. Good night, everybody.